Yeah, it's frozen. Mm-hmm. I ain't had shots for little like you had Tito's for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tito's. I got some tea. I ain't big. I ain't. Where in the car? Yeah. It's some of the car. You want some? In the trunk. You wanted some? You be drinking? You need to loosen up? You alright? Yeah, sure. Right. This is what we did. <laughs> alright. Alright, we back. We need answers podcast. Today we got my guy in here, little Maurice. Um, every episode, like we always do, break down at the connection. Um, so little is my man Deron from episode one, the FYF podcast. Is little brother, like a little brother to me. So you all like family, and um, little is a, a amazing story that I always took took notice to, and 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 gave him a lot of salute to about his story because he standed a test that was like. Very severe, and I always tell him a lot of adults wouldn't have handled it the way he did. Very stand up about it. Very um, very. It was a it's a, a very serious situation. So the, the episode of the day is is the the fuck cancer episode. There's all all types of everything in that round. Every every fact, everything about it. It's just we just want to discuss that whole thing. But little had a situation that he went through a few years back. And um, I I seen it from start to finish, and I seen how he handled it. He handled it like a stand up guy. Um, never seen him sweat. Never seen him worry. Um, like, like I said, I, it's adults that go into the situation, young and old, and you see like I think seeing a lot of people. Cause now that I'm thinking about, it, I remember when I was at um, when we used to do the, the running on the track. On like when I used to go work out on the track. One time it was a kid. Um, he was bald, and my little cousin was like, she was, she ain't mean no harm, but she had said something about, like, to, to uh, her mother about him, and um, he heard it, and he was like, I have cancer, but he was basically just letting her know what it is, but he's probably like 80 years old or something like that, but it was just, the, like, the, the perseverance, and he didn't let it bother him at nothing, he kept running at it, he said it and all that, and that just little moment right there is just something that, like, similar with little. Never seen him sweat, never seen him let it bother him or nothing. I'm sure it did. I'm sure it goes through everybody. Everybody goes through everything, but most important is to never let people see you sweat. And that's one thing that I I got from Little um, with this whole process, seeing him go through it. Uh, we supposed to have Tim here. Tim will be here next time. Hopefully, you'll be able to break it up. But Tim um, went through a similar situation. He could speak on as well, but um, the goal with this one is just to spread knowledge and, and give people uh, wisdom and, and, and um, a lot of positive energy, because you might know somebody going through it, you might be going through it yourself, but, you know, we got tips, we share experiences, Dude, that's the whole purpose of this podcast, we need answers, because people that need answers, and need inspiration, and need hope, we can give it to them in different ways, and I think Little is the perfect candidate for this, because like I said, he he went through it, he can speak on it, he can vouch for it, he's going through it, he's still an advocate for it, um, do the walks all the time, all of that, so let him get into it and tell his story, so um, how old are you, little? I'm 19. 19, so start from the beginning to where you, where the day one when you found out about this situation. Uh, um, I was 15 years old, 15, uh, my parents was in a room, I was in a shower. I had a big lump on my chest, but it was itching real bad. So I think that's what really made me get back in the shower because it was itching. I'm like, damn, I'm still dirty or something. <laughs> so uh, when I got back in, I cleaned that spot real good. So when I got back out, it was still itching. So I actually went to the mirror in the bathroom and looked at it and it was a big red spot. So I hurried up and went to my, my parents' room they um, eventually sent me to the emergency room. Mm-hmm. No, they sent me to the doctor's at first. The doctor's office sent me to the emergency room. Once the emergency room, they have they held me in there for like a week, a week running just running tests. Uh, this was the same day that you th- was in the shower, like the next day. You know, you I, know, I, yeah, the next day, oh, the right. next morning, because it was at night. It was like ten o'clock at night. Right. So they set a doctor's appointment up the next day. It was Monday. The next day. Uh, put me doctors doctor sent me to the emergency room the emergency room helped me in there for a week straight did ramp blood work biopsies on me I ain't find out for like a week until a week later 
people that actually was. They that Friday they they thought it was some type of cancer, but they wasn't for sure. They didn't. It wasn't a hundred percent cancer. So uh, I went to school for that next week. And then after that, they they called. I was like, it's cancer. I had to drop out of school and uh, I had to get it started right away. I had to get take take chemotherapy. I had it like six days for six days straight. Then I had I could go home for thirty days, and then I had to come right back for six days. I did that for like six six months straight. Like, so eventually they said it was cancer free, like about a six month. Uh, I say six months later after that, it came right back. Mm. And they came back. I did the same treatment, but I did it for two months this time, and it, the chemotherapy was real strong. It was like real strong. I couldn't even take, I couldn't even eat. This time I couldn't even eat, like, nothing. You was real weak. I was weak. I was getting small. The first time, the first time I went through it, though, like, the cancer, the chemotherapy wasn't, wasn't even that strong. Like, you could tell, like, I was up. Mm -hmm. I was eating everything. I was getting fat the first really? time. I gained a lot of weight. I probably gained, like, 30 pounds the first time. Just that like, was, that was when you, when you started losing the head? Yeah. That time, yeah, I remember you picked up the weight that time. Yeah, I picked up a lot of weight. Yeah. The second time I couldn't even eat. I was trying. I was having problems eating. Like, I couldn't eat nothing. Throwing everything up. Um. So what? What? When you first? When you first got the news? How did you feel? Like when you first went to the hospital? Talk about when you first went to the doctors and they said that it might be. What it might when be? You how you Saint feel? Agnes and all of that. Uh, <laughs> Sinai. Sinai. Yeah. Um, I was at Sinai. And I was just like, like, I I was okay with it. Like he 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 handled it worse than me at first. Like he ran out naturally. Yeah, naturally. I but think I was, anybody would. Like yeah. he ran. I can't even, I can't even hear this shit. I remember my brother was at work. I can't even hear this shit no more. Right. He ran out. And then I was just looking like, I'm gonna have to get through. Like I'm too young to die. So did I you can't. did you believe it though? Like was you like all yeah, time? Yeah, I was like. like I don't do nothing like I don't. I thought like you feel me like certain certain cancers come from certain things, but they say cancer you don't know what cancer come from. But yeah. I'm like being just I thought adulthood really caused yeah you don't you don't never hear right. about a kid, kid so it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it sounds far fetched. That's why I asked like if you when you heard it was like it probably ain't that like I ain't yeah I ain't think it was that yeah. But then I was starting to look up stuff like red red uh red lumpy chest and earlier. And they were saying that. They say cancer. They say that's the worst thing to do when something come up, though. Look at Google and shit. Yeah. And they be like, even when it, it don't was, be that, it be like saying you some life or death shit. And they don't really. Be, but, it was all types of cancer. Yeah, yeah. Up and Google. then you just think about it so much after you read it. It's like, well, shit, dang. I but, get ask my mother, like, man, I think this cancer. Before, this was before they told you. The yeah. doctors. Oh, okay. Before they told me the doctor. Yeah. Like, man, I think this cancer. And she was like, boy, shut up. Uh, <laughs> like, it ain't cancer, you good. Right. And, yeah. and then when you went in there, they told you that. So you went back to school. Actually, you... they called me. They called us like, after that week passed, we went by. I went I went to school that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I think that Wednesday night they called us. Like, it's cancer. Um, you wanted to be, you wanted to come come to the hospital by next Monday so you can start treatment right away. And it, how, how, when you went back to school, it was on your mind every day? No, not really. You ain't think I, about it? No, I was just having fun, you know. No, uh, kids. Yeah. And not this trying, was, what not, grade was you in? I was in the 10th grade. Ten, oh, this was my, my first, uh, this is like, I told it, so it was like, just started. Just yeah, started. school just started. I was ready to hoop. I was in, and the crazy thing is, I was in the best shape of my life for basketball. Like, that year? That year, I was in the best shape. I played the whole season of AU. Like, I'm I, I'm always, a, and I'm, I'm injury prone. I get injuries a lot. Like, but like, even before this? Yeah, before this. Oh, okay. So, like. At, yeah, I didn't have no injuries. I played the whole summer, the whole spring, wow. the whole winter. Atlanta. Atlanta. I went down to Atlanta. I did real good. That's crazy. My team. That's crazy how shit work. Like, the That's odds of that. Like, your, your most healthiest year is the year you went through something that was very detrimental to your career, for real. Yeah, like, I was, I was ready to go back to Atlanta. Like, mm -hmm. I seen, I seen, I, I seen a lot of NBA players, like, now. Mm -hmm. Like, uh... T.K. Ferguson, 
Jaleek Feldman. I don't know if Jaleek made the league yet, but he he oversees him. He went to North Carolina. Uh, what's the number one draft pick that went to Washington? Markel Fultz. Oh, okay. I seen all of them. Though. So this that was like you was extra motivated that year. Yeah. Uh, what's um big fella from um Philadelphia? No, nah, no. Nah. Uh, from he went. He an African. He real tall, seven foot. I can't think of his name. Bo Bo. No, not Taco Bo. Uh, um. He ain't even go to the car. He ain't go. But he was down there though. Yeah, he was down there. Like, I seen a lot of NBA players. He was some guys that in college. On your team. Yeah. Um. That year I played with a lot of D one players also too. Like James Bishop. He had LSU. My good friend James Bishop. My good friend Logan. Logan Curtis. Um, yeah, I be a normal. He he a football player, but he he be one at um, Houston. He went to Alabama his first year, freshman year. So they they seen the process too going yeah. through all this, and they was supportive through all the, the whole thing too. Yeah, Gerard Mungo. Okay, oh my gosh. So when you said you you went back to school, you went back to school, and they, after they after they told you the news, and then it was like immediately go to the hospital and start chemo. Yeah. So how was that when you started the chemo? Um, it was easy. Like my first time was easy. I'm like, oh, that's that's light for real. Right. But I had in my mindset like, I think majority of people like don't make it through cancer mm-hmm. because they have in their mindset like, I'm yeah. ready to die. Yeah, right. I I think so too. I think that's what a lot of shit too though. Like with health stuff, any kind of thing that's like, if you 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 succumb to it and, and give up already, then it's yeah. not with it. Everybody yeah. said that about cancer. It's a mind frame thing. Yeah, so I was I was already in into it like. I'm ready to make it through this and be back hooping yeah. by by January right. something like that. Right. And that's what they said. Like when you started, they was like, once you go through this, what was what did they say for as a process? Like you do the chemo and then this will happen after that. Like, yeah, like after I did the chemo, they said it'll go all the way and I'd be back hooping. So they so 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 telling you that it probably didn't even feel like nothing to worry like, about for real. That's, yeah, that's easy. Just for something, real. just something to go through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So that that was like um. So you went through that, and then that's when, after you did the chemo, that's when you started to gain the weight and, and lose the head and all of that. Yeah. So explain how you felt when, when that started happening. Um, my first time, I was losing my, when I first started losing my head, it was probably like February until I started losing my head. And you started chemo when? In October. October. So, so it was months like, later. Yeah, and that's crazy. Yeah, it was months later. Like, and they told you that this was going to start happening. Yeah, so but most people think like cancer caused you to lose your head. It's but the chemo. It's really the chemo, yeah, the medicine is so right. strong. Right. Like you get black nails, like your nails start to grow black also through chemo. Because ain't it, the, ain't it like when the the the, the, the radiation kind of like it shut the cells down, cells down or something? Oh, no, that's not radiation, radiation yet. I ain't, oh, okay. hit, radi- okay, I ain't we ain't hit the radiation. So what is chemo then? What? Chemotherapy is go, you go through your IV. Like, okay. your, your, like my first time I had a port line in my chest, I had to get a port in my chest. Mm-hmm. It's just like when they put a hole in your chest or something? Um, They put uh, like a metal piece in your chest. Mm-hmm. And uh, they stick IVs, like, they put needles in your chest, basically, okay. to get, but I, I put hailing cream on it, so I wouldn't feel when they stuck me with the needles. Mm-hmm. But I had to have that in my chest for, like, six days mm-hmm. with the with the little thing monitor. Right. So I was, not really. Uh-huh. So I had to walk around with that, walk around with that on me mm-hmm. and take showers with that stuff on me when I was in the hospital. Oh, yeah. okay. It wasn't that painful, but, like, my first time, like, when I first started losing my head, I caught my mother. I think she was out of, out of town. I caught my mother. Like, mom losing my head. So she laughing. And uh, I'm like, I'm ready to just cut it off. So I, I just cut my head off. Okay. <laughs> I took my father's razors and just cut it all off. Yeah, you gave yourself the body. Yeah, I gave myself the spirit. You know, two ashes and some more. <laughs> And then, is it so was the weight like at the same time, or did that eventually just your weight that, start again? It started again. I probably gained like five. I probably gained like five pounds by then. And that was that's through chemo too, the weight gain. Uh, well, the chemo, it's not through through it, but it was like I'm hungry, so it, it built me a, a strong appetite. Oh, okay, but so you I, ate a lot. Yeah, but oh, I would, okay. like I would have I could only eat what I'm praying for, like a pregnant lady. Oh, like, like I can only Weird eat. shit. Yeah. What like, you was eating? 
I was eating, I ain't really lie, I was eating like pasta, like I wanted shrimp, shrimp pasta, shrimp, shrimp alfredo a lot. Or macaroni and cheese. I didn't know that. I didn't know you cravings like that. Oh, what else from Miller's I used to get a lot? Um, turkey Club. Turkey Club. I used to get <laughs> <Anytime, laughs> <don't worry. laughs> <laughs> Turkey Club. I need Turkey Club before you come up, bro. <laughs> With hot sauna, I need that. So, so you know, when you, you was in a, well, once you went through that, you was in a hospital for how long? Um, Six months, but it was like six months, but six days straight. Is that, that's when, that was when, um, well, New Year's. Well, yeah, that, that was the first year. Because I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. We was there. We spent New Year's with a little with Lil' Ben. That yeah, was dope. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. Yeah, 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 we brought it in. Yep. I remember we was playing was 2K and shit. So how was your confidence going through this part? Like, I know we halfway through, but how was your confidence when you, like, the loss and the gain, then being in the hospital period? Like, what would that do to your confidence? Um, I ain't really do nothing though. It's cause it's like mind over matter to me. So 100%. I was, I was like, I'm good. Yeah. Once I, especially when I first went through the first one, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's a cakewalk for real. Yeah. Yeah. But the second time, I ain't really lie. Like the second time, like I was, that was a tough one. Like chemotherapy really beat me up that time. Like I ain't want nothing to do with it after that. So why was it different? It's the medicine. They made the medicine ten times stronger. Mm-hmm. Like the chemotherapy was. Crazy, but it was like I only had to do that for two. I only did that two times for six days. Okay. So it was like two months. I did it for two months. Okay. For six days, so it was twelve days all together. So when you got how did? Sorry. So before we get to that, we went through. You went through the um January, February. That's when you said the the weight gain, the head loss. So after that, once you you ended up progressing back to kind of like normal. Yeah, like no, March, and all that. March 7th was my last day of chemotherapy the first time. Okay. And then? Then after that, I'm like, I'm back hoop. I'm back ready to hoop. Right. I remember my first time back hooping. I fell down. Like, I fell. I could try and dribble mm. fast, like speed ball. Mm. And fell. Because um, you wasn't. Because I'm fat. I'm oh, fat. okay. I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fat. I'm not even. You wasn't back 100%. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Right. So you, was your strength there? Um, yeah, it was there. Oh, uh, you just My strength, I was weight. just fat. I couldn't get tr- balance, balance mm-hmm. out. I was going too fast. So you worked out and got the weight down, or? Yeah, eventually I got the weight back down when I worked out. But that's not it. I didn't even go back slim until mm-hmm. my second time. That's what really made me lose all my weight. Like. Mm-hmm. And then, Cause so. like the doctors, they, they tell you not to do a lot of weight lifting now because of Cause it's chemotherapy made my heart weak, so I can't really do too much. I gotta do a lot of body lift. Okay. So it was like hard. Like I had to adjust to it, but by the time I was adjusting to it, it came back around. So when it came back around, it was like I lost all the weight from the prior time to that. So I now I got to pick back weight. Right. Pick weight back up. Okay. When I came back. And so that you said that was six months. Yeah, that was six months. That was like December. So they how did that how did that go? They just called you out the blue, or you was doing checkups, and then they was yeah, like, check came back. Yeah, but I really honest, honestly, they gonna tell you like it went away. But I don't think it really went away because yeah. it grew, like it grew from my chest to my neck. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I don't think, I don't think it really went away. Is it? Does it go away though? Is it possible, or does it? Yeah, this time for sure it went away. Like, okay. This time, cause at first my mother said like something was hi- highlighted, but they said not to worry about it or something like that. Yeah. Cause I think a lot. Cause of it was a tissue or something like that. She said it was just. They said it was some tissue issues or something like okay. that. Okay. Okay. But she really think like once we all put it together, they were like we really think it was the chemo. I mean it was cancerous still, but mm-hmm. now it just grew to my neck area, from my chest to my neck. So what was the dude throughout this period? I know we just getting into the second part of the, when you went through it again. You that how was the support system through that time? Like was that a big help for how you got through? Yeah, I ain't really lie. Like my support system was crazy. Like it was crazy. Like Marshawn, like yeah. I got a lot of support off Marshawn. Like, Who came up with that Marshawn? Um, my my um coach, Coach Mike McCormick. Mm. He came up with Marshawn. Just the just the. That was like a, a hashtag to really push like support. Yeah, I'm not mean, like people from all over Baltimore, like basketball players, like that. I look, gr- I look to growing up. Yeah, they was hip. But high school, like as I'm growing, as I'm like 
middle school going to that high school and they like graduating high school going to that college, like they was even tweeting like Mars Strong, like I'm that's like, what's up. Like that that that's that pushed up. me too, like yeah. man, like yeah, I think that's very important with with situations like cancer, any any kind of situation like when people down, that type of stuff just give you even more put because you already had the the self esteem and the attitude like all right, I'm good, I'm I'm gonna go through it, I'm gonna push through it, but then you got a crowd of people behind you even put it's like I definitely got it now. Like um, like Mike he even went to Louisville. I was asleep though, but he he had Rick Pitino on the phone where he talked to me for but, real. But it was like, I'm asleep. <laughs> but he got me a ball sign. Damian Lee, he from Baltimore. Uh-huh. Damian Lee, Steph Curry, brother-in-law. Oh, okay. I know he's from Baltimore. He, he played with the Warriors. Yeah, he played with the Warriors. Okay. I ain't he, know. Uh, he went to Louisville. Like, his city is coming from, um, he transferred from, he transferred from Drexel. Why is Calvin Hodge. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hodge. Oh, right. He transferred to Drexel. He transferred from Drexel to Louisville his senior year. Uh... Donovan Mitchell was on that team. That year I was about too. to see that. Okay. Oh yeah. So yeah, Don. Yeah. So so. That makes sense. Once like Donovan Mitchell started blowing up, I went back and looked at the ball. I'm like, <laughs> Donovan Mitchell signed my <laughs> ball. <laughs> that's 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 oh, he did. That. Oh, that's I'm like, that's tough. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah. Damn, that was hell. I ain't know about that. You had a hell of a support. I mean, that. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, I ain't really lie. Mike, Mike got got me support a lot from people from like that's tough, from that town from. The, Basketball players that I looked up to, like all of that. So, with that time when you couldn't play, you really couldn't play. And then, now that I'm thinking about it, you got most of your support from what you love, basketball, for yeah. real. So, what the, how did that, so with that going hand in hand, how did that make you feel as far as I can't do what I really want to do, but this is what I love and it's really, it's showing yeah, me that. That, put, that pushed me too, though. Like, to really want to get that back. really come back, like be the yeah. first person to go D1. Like, I ain't. We well, don't know too many people that was like had cancer twice, yeah. and then went Division One or made it to the overseas or made it to the league. Right, like, the dream is the league for real. My dream first is to go to school for free, college for free. I'm yeah. at Delaware State now, mm-hmm. so uh, that's that's the first goal. But the second goal is to make it to the, the league. league. Yeah. yeah, that's what you do it for. That's the whole purpose of playing ball, make it to the <laughs> league. So yeah, but that's I remember when we was um. Where it send you shit or where it just come across it and it'll be um just like people would like uh, I remember you used to talk about uh, Eric Reed and yeah. that from Case because he had uh yeah yeah no he had the same same one I did he a fo- he a football player yeah. for the Chiefs right I think well he used to play with he was a safety for the Chiefs I think and he made his comeback and yeah. he went through his whole thing so that was like I think that was one of the things I I remember you sh- I don't know who shared you might share the one of us shared, shared it and it was just the whole. That process is just that's another encouragement. Like yeah, like it's definitely possible that I can I can do this and push you. Was that a, a like shit like that? Was that a push? Like yeah, it was like yeah, like anything possible. Like yeah. you feel me? I feel as though anything possible now. I got over yeah. this. Hell yeah, anything. I would too. I would too. I would, I would, too. I would too. And I and I think that the same. Just like you said, the attitude about it. That that's a. A testament to life itself. Just, just that you know, if you your attitude and your mind frame about shit, if you you go in it with positive, is that that was that was something that could have been life or death, and you took it just as simple as that. Like I know I'm gonna do it, and I did it, and I got yeah. through it, and and that's what it is at a young age. Because at fifteen, we was we wasn't even thinking nothing like nothing yeah. serious like that, nothing yeah. serious I'm like that. Like so. Brandon. Yeah, take yeah. hell of shit for granted, but that's why I always said, like, whenever I text you birthday and shit, it's like, I always saluted that, because you got it, like you said, adults immediately give up, like, yeah, it's about to be over, over. Yeah. like, nah, it's but not over. no, it's not over, it to be over. Right, right, and it's all about, um, and it's all about the attitude, because even, like, I always bring up a story about my grandmother, my grandmother had, um, if I ain't mistaken, I don't, I don't like the, the say the wrong thing about it. It was something to do with cancer, but it was like throat cancer. But I noticed with my grandmother, and I mean, I guess with age, at some time, some people be, they tired of it, or they not tired of it, but just at some point, some people just give up, period. They just accept it, like this might be whatever, but cause especially when you're older. But I always notice, and I tell people a lot about my grandmother, because when she found out that she had it, it was too late, but I noticed a change in her a long time before that. Like when we went to, we always go to the beach over the summer, and um, 
I just know is everybody knew my grandma was lively. Like she always be active, whatever, down for whatever. And she just was very distant, quiet. And that's never her. And I, I remember I, I pulled up. I was like, "You good?" She's like, "Yeah, I'm alright. I'm just thinking." And then when it, later on, that was like July, I think. And then she passed in October. And I think when we found out it was like late September. And when she got into the hospital, like everybody, when we was in the hospital, everybody, and even at the funeral and shit. Everybody was like positive. We was just trying to get positive vibe, positive energy, all that. Everybody was shouting. Wasn't no sad faces in the hospital, none of that. And then um, when she found out, you know, she, I remember I came in. Uh, my uncle Todd was in there with her, and I think he, the doctor just told both of them. And then I came in, and I was like, um, she told me, she's like, yeah, grandma, a hug. And I was like, we're going to be good. We got it. Like, we, we got this for everybody. And she was, even when she came out the hospital, she was regular. Like, we went to the house. I was cracking jokes all like I usually do try and build that emotion, but I think mm -hmm. after a while people uh people just um like some sometimes it's just all about the energy and all about your mind frame. And like I said, it's a testament to life. Like even with stuff less serious than that, if you got the positive mind frame, school, basketball, all that, I'ma do this. Like the Kobe shit, that mama mentality. He always had that attitude, like, yeah, be the best, be the greatest, all that type of shit. But um that's like I I said all that to say that it's just important to have be positive, positive energy, positive thoughts all the way. Just keep pushing it and doing all that. Cause like I said, I never seen you sweat about it. Um, even when you got back on the court, we talk about that. We talk about that as well when you got back to playing basketball. But um, when you said the uh, the second part, how was it? You said it was the 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 process was tougher for chemo and all of that. Mm -hmm. But how was what was the what was the difference in you? Did you did you get a difference in yourself? Or it was still the same. No, I ain't really lie. Like that that process was different. Like I ain't took a hold on you. Yeah, it took a hold on me. Like that 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 built me. That okay. built that really built me right there. Like okay. I ain't even had thoughts. I ain't never even tell nobody this. But I, I think I probably just recently told my brother. Like, I had probably had thoughts of trying trying running into something to end it all. Cause like that process of chemotherapy. Was was tough. Like I'm, I'm not ready for this. Like I can't do this no more. And like God worked in mysterious ways. So like the second time, they like it's small. Like it's real small. So chemotherapy not gonna be able to work work no more. So we gonna have to do radiation. Like that was a straight blessing. Like I, could, I told, I told everybody like I don't think I could do this no more. Like it's really killing me. Like. It eat. had you weak and shit. It had me weak, couldn't eat, throwing up. Like, that was the worst I ever felt through everything. Mm. So what's what's the explain the process of radiation and chemo? How that like what's radiation, radiation go through like go through IVs. I mean chemotherapy go through IVs. Radiation you gotta get under a tube mm -hmm. with like radiation just beaming on that like, one spot where it's cancerous at. You can feel it. No, but over time, I did it for 30 days straight, literally, like, 30 days. Like, I went every morning. I love Saturday, it. Saturday and Sunday. I was Friday night for, like, 30 minutes. Okay. But, like, they, the way my radiation was set up, it was, like, my neck area to my chest. Mm -hmm. So, like, my, I would have a sore throat. Like, eventually, it built it built in a sore throat. Mm -hmm. um, my neck area was black. Like, I got a real black neck area from the radiation just beaming on me. Mm -hmm. Um, I could only eat soft stuff like Jello, put it in soup. How long did you have to go through that? Thirty like, days. Like, so that whole thirty days, you couldn't do nothing but eat. Like, well, eventually, soft. eventually it built it up. Like my neck, like I think, like by week two, my neck was like I couldn't, I couldn't eat too much. Mm -hmm. I couldn't eat nothing hard because it hurt swallowing. Uh, and this was, and you said this was uh, what year was this? This was. 27, 2017, I want to say. And you said that was six months later. So that was about, like, around September? No, no. Because, uh, so when I did it, I did it October to March. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I did October to March. The first time? The first time. Okay. Then I was like, it was like six months I found back out. But don't, but when I found back out the six months, I actually still played basketball. I didn't do it until I didn't start treatment until like that February after I uh, finished playing my JV year with Mount St. Joe. Oh, okay. so I played through cancer. Like, I okay. played through it, knowing I had it all. Um, 
actually won a JV championship that year and an MIAA that year. That's what's up. Did you, um, could you tell the difference when you when you played? No, I just I played better. For real. Like, I was I, like that's that. I don't know if it was because like I know what I'm ready to go through, so mm-hmm. I'm ready to just giving my all. Okay. So, but I played a lot better. Like, I think that playoff year, like JV year, you got playoffs like mm-hmm. and, and BCL and MIAA. I think that that whole JV year, I probably averaged like 17, 17 points. Okay. Five five rebounds. Point guard. Yeah, and I wasn't even no point guard on that team. I just whatever. Yeah, I was level <laughs> on that team. <laughs> I remember them games too. They definitely was live. And then after that, that's when we went straight into it. After after my after I won it, we went into it like a week later, and then I did it for like two months. So probably like two months, probably like April. I was I was done with both chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. I ain't, I ain't jumping to radiation until like June though. Like I don't know what was the delay process. Why I had to delay? Why we had to delay the process instead of jumping straight into radiation, chemotherapy to radiation. I don't know why we did it like that, but I had to wait like a month or two. Cause I, I remember doing it in my birthday month June. I had to go thirty days straight in June. Mm-hmm. How was how you felt about that spending your birthday doing it? Um, it was fine because. Radiation, you only in there for an hour. Okay. I only in there for an hour, and I went every morning. Okay. So it was like, it was cool. I got the rest of it. When we took them up, when we took them up. Top golf. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I went to top, okay. top golf. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you was you was gravy, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. I remember that. So what? Well, how was the um? So what? What was it? Was a point in time you did homeschool too, right? Yeah. So how how you felt about that? Homeschool. That was. I didn't like homeschool. You really got, really, you really got to pay attention at home school. Hey, you just no. by yourself, man. <laughs> yeah, ain't, ain't no hiding behind nothing. nothing. <laughs> and then you, can't, and you really can't do nothing. But that was because you couldn't be at school at because school, of the, uh, chemotherapy. Okay. But my, my, my I reclassed, like my first year, I reclassed back into the 10th grade. Mm. And then I went back my, I went back to the 10th grade and that's when I got it again. So like, I think I finished out two or three quarters. Mm-hmm. So they like, you don't even got to finish the fourth quarter. All right. So I'm like, cool. So they looked out for real. Yeah, they looked out. So how you feel, how did you feel about like not being with with, with your classmates though? Like, did it, did it make you feel, was that a feeling though? Like, I know, like you said, it's different when you got to focus as far as like just staying at home and being with a teacher. But did it make you feel different like being in the class? But you was coming from all boys school too. Yeah, I was coming from all boys yeah. school. But but being at an all boys school, you, so you gotta make it fun. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I transferred to Newtown my senior year, but like St. Joe, like that's it's way fun as and like because everybody just cracking jokes around. Oh, like, <laughs> instead of you feel me, like instead of females, instead of showing off the females, like it's less drama and all of that. Cause, oh, okay. You know people switch up when you get around females. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you really you really gotta make the fun at, at, at St. Joe. Okay. So what, did you had a cool teacher though? Yeah, my teacher was cool. No, I'm talking about um, oh, homeschool. Yeah, I had I had like three teachers at homeschool: a Spanish teacher, an English teacher, and a math teacher. And the crazy thing is, my English teacher passed away. Mm. So it was like during that time. Yeah, during that time, Dang. my English teacher passed away. From what? I don't even know. Wow. I shit. That's crazy. You going through something that's. That that is just that whole story that's crazy. Yeah, like you going wild. through something that's that could have took you out, and then it, your teacher go out and it's like push through another thing to push through. Like it's it's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. So um, so after that you you uh so so when was it? What was the period between that and then when you was able to go back to school? How long ago was that? I mean, how long between the time? Um, that was my first temporary year because I, I, I dropped out of school. Well, I didn't drop out. I had to leave school, to leave school in the temp, my first temporary year in October. Uh, so I ain't, I probably just finished the first quarter. So like the second second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter, I had to finish up with them teachers. Mm-hmm. So that was like November through November through, through May. And how long did you have to, before you, so you went back, how many, how many months later? You went to, uh, that's when you transferred after that, right? No, no, no I, trans- I transferred my senior year. Oh, okay. So you went back to, to, to I went back to Yeah, I went okay. back to St. Joe for another temporary year. And then you 
did the 10th and 11th grade. I did not 10th and 11th grade at St. Joe's. So, oh, well, another thing I wanted to ask you. How was it, um, when you was in the hospital, you was amongst other uh, young people with uh, cancer and all that? Yeah. So how was that? Like, how was it seen? Um, Cause I know you probably seen people even younger than you going through. Yeah, it was it was it was way more people younger than me. Like I probably it was only probably like two people, my age. It was two people my age. My person I went to middle school with. She passed away. The young girl passed away. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it was another dude named Nigel. He was there. He he doing good for himself. I think he he made a beat for YG Table for a local rapper YG Table. Okay. Um. Yeah, he doing good for himself. I think he moved to Atlanta. Lining for uh for making beats. And he, he shook the whole Yeah, he bounced back too. Well, that's what's up. That's and he what's down the line of making beats. I think he I think he signed to somebody down the line. So oh, how listen. how was it saying like was was it was that like uh was it hard seeing other people or like especially younger people going through it or was it like it was it more encouragement? Cause I like I said, I shared that story in the beginning about the kid, like I like that, that. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way when I when I when she when my cousin told me about that. But it's just like it. It also made me look at him like, well, that's what's up, shorty. He just he ain't afraid to say what's right. going on with him. He 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 staying on who he is. But I know you in the monks of him, and you seeing people like this going through it. Like it's just sad. Like, yeah, that, that yeah. process is just sad. Like I, ain't, I'm going through it. I'm 15. But she, this little girl going through it. She three. She Dang. four years. She don't even know what life is right, yet. Right. Mm-hmm. That's it's just sad to yeah. see, but God, they say God. I mean, God working, working the sturdy ways oh, yeah. for the better. Oh, yeah. That's how I look at it. I just look at it like it was a it was a lesson. Wow. Like I look at it also as a lesson. Like this just humbling me. Like I gotta mm-hmm. be more humble. Yeah. Like, I told you, I know, I'm like I'm, that was my temporary year, but I was going to my temporary year. Like I'm in the best shape of my life. Yeah, yeah. it was just more humbling also. Like, yeah. Just Make you appreciate shit more and all that. Yeah, like, yeah. don't take nothing for granted. Humble yeah. yourself. Because mm-hmm. anything can be took just like that. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, and this is great that you noticed that and you took that. Because, like I said, it's, it's, it's kids and it's adults that don't even realize that. They take all that shit for granted. And it, sometimes it, it takes something like that to happen. Sometimes it don't. But um, your testament is, is to, to it shed light on other people for them to to know offhand and, and even when not with the same situation just to know like shit can happen right. but you can push through the shit and you can you can make the best out of a situation and, and, and still be yourself at the end of the day so tell me about um when you when you was uh when you pr- finally got back to the to playing basketball and all that how was that feeling uh you talking about my jv or my or just pray from now well and the last what's the name oh phew. I would, I, um... Well, the, before you say that, what was the best, the best thing? Because I I'm, I was assuming that that would be the, the best feeling to finally get back and do you on the court. But what was the best thing that you finally was like, okay, I'm, I can finally do this again, or I can, I can get back and... What just, was, just live my everyday life. Okay. <laughs> just back to appreciate it. Get pooping yeah. right now, just... Yeah. I ain't got to go to the hospital no more. Right. I ain't got to get stuck with needle. Right. This my everyday life is back. Yeah. Yeah. That's... I, I was assuming that. But so how was the... Because um, y'all, you when you transferred to Newtown, y'all went to the uh, the States. Now, we ain't... We, well, we lost to Emerson before we got to the States. So what, what was what was that game? That was the... That was... Yeah. That was like county championship. Oh, I, we won a county championship. The one up Towson, right? Oh yeah, that was just county. <laughs> okay, that was county championship. We won it. We so, beat Milf- I mean, we beat Franklin. So that was the um. How how did that feel? That was was that the highest you've been as far as the uh, as far as like winning the, the ranks and shit in high school? Yeah, I mean outside of going to Atlanta, yeah. How was that? Well, how how was that that whole thing? As far as like uh, in in. As far as with your journey and all that, how did that make you feel a certain way about? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, it's like a county. It's not that too many, too many good teams in the county. So okay. I'm on, I'm, okay. I, like I want to get a city where they want. They wanted us to Newtown versus Patty that year. Like last like year. You and I, I, I let everybody. Down. I feel as though I lost that game. Like I played bad that game. I played, I played. I, my Emerson game when we played Emerson. I played bad, but. 
Everybody played bad. Yeah, I don't yeah, everybody happens to everybody. everybody but that, definitely, that game definitely been on that's that, that game's still on my mind to this day. <laughs> <laughs> like, but that's motivation moving forward. Yeah, definitely. Now, Cause now you playing for Dallas State, right? Yeah. yeah well, I play yeah. next year, but I'm I had to get surgery on my hip. Like there's always injury prone. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not even no injury, like that's just something that, that was built, like I had overgrowth of bone, like Oh, it's okay. just like always oh, some wild stuff for me, yeah. like overgrowth of bone. I had to get my bone shaved down. But you, you got a hell of a story though, even with that, like all that, all that together. Mm-hmm. Talk about the um the walks, the the walks you used to do. Well, you oh, still doing? Oh yeah, um, every first November, first week of November, I do a non Hodgkin lymphoma, lymphoma and leukemia walk, um, downtown by the Oreo Stadium. And this year it wasn't by the Oreo Stadium; it was by Sandlot. Harbor East. Harbor East. Um, but like my my first time I had a lot of support. To, it was it wasn't a little support. It was it was still a lot of people. Mm-hmm. My second time it was big. Like that one like that one was like big, big. Yeah. Like I and actually I'm I was a uh they called me a hero, um I forgot the actual name, but it was like some type of hero hero. So I had to get on stage in front of speech. like Yeah, I had to make a speech in front of a lot of people. It was like probably like five thousand people. <laughs> I don't know how many people. It was intimidating. I was intimidating. Yeah, it ain't look like you ain't look like you. Nah. Was, you and Rob was up there. Mm. But how how did that was that support system with that though? How was that like? Cause yeah. that, those that whole company they supported you a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, and they still do. Like, I recently just seen a lady Christmas break. And the mall like just stopped me like Maurice. I don't even know who she is. For real. Like, she like, um, I work for the society. I'm like, oh okay, how you doing? She's like, let me take a picture so I can send it to uh, the lady that that's 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 right there with me. Like she helped me through everything. Like mm-hmm. was what the society need me to do? Take pictures. Mm-hmm. Like I. I I had to go take pictures with a lot of people, like Subaru Company, the car company, the up. Orioles Stadium. I mean, the Orioles organization. Like, yeah. they, 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 they want me to take a lot. They want me to take a lot more. They, they just need. I, I wouldn't say need me, but they I want mean, me to they, be there for you. They probably do need you because it's, it's like, like I said, it's, it's your story. It holds weight, especially who you are, your age group, your brag, like your age, who you are to, to people in the basketball the city, well-known family, well-known friends and all that. So it takes certain situations because if you, for instance, if you never went through it and another kid, ninth, 10th grade, go through that, he might be embarrassed and now he want to speak up for a situation at all. Like, nigga might just be like, I, I didn't count they self out or just be embarrassed to go back, especially with the, the, the effects of... Uh, Chemo and radiation and all that. So with with you, like, is you just never know who you can affect or, or put put shine on. Even adults, like, you just never know. So I think it is 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 like, and you and anybody else that go through a situation like this, it's like you, cause you, if they can relate to you. My thing is, just like with like my job, I feel like, or anybody with that works with with the youth, it gotta be somebody that they can relate to. They ain't gonna fuck with nobody. Like if you if it was a. a 40 year old man saying this whole same situation. They be like, well, that shit old people go through. They ain't gonna look at it like, like, cause this ain't nothing normal. Like, this ain't nothing to have, especially like regular kid, athletic, healthy, all of that. Besides the sports injuries, like healthy kids. So don't nobody be thinking shit like this could happen. So the more, the more people they can get to vouch for that and say, like, you know, you can get through this, you can do that. Like, this is the better. Like, cause. If I didn't know you and I seen that, I'd take my head off and salute that. Mm-hmm. And you did a lot of shit. Talk about your experiences, because I remember you talked that the EMI thing we did. You shared your story with me and Terrence. The mm-hmm. EMI thing you did. Um, you did with uh, uh, uh um, what's Chad' cousin name? His his camp. You spoke yeah, at his and, camp, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you I'm spoke at his camp. You spoke at um. You did a lot of speeches, just talking and sharing your story with people, and um. It take a lot of guts to do shit like that too, because everybody not good speaking in front of crowds and all that. Yeah. And um, how was 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 that therapeutic for you sharing your story? Like, did it like? Cause I know I know me. Whenever I speak, the more I do public speaking or shit like this, it is easier. The more I do it. So once you got you was doing it over and over, I know you got a knack for it. And did anybody ever like come up to you on show appreciation like throughout any of them? 
Yeah, I get a lot of love show. Like when I go to local basketball games, like big local basketball games, mm-hmm. and um, any 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 place in Baltimore, like people know that know me, they, they, they salute me honestly and tell me like proud of you, mm-hmm. keep keep doing good for me. Like you you inspired you inspired me. Like adults even told me like they inspired me, and that was major when adult tell you like when adult tell you that like. You inspired me to go hard or something like that. Yeah, like, that's big. Like Hell that yeah. really take that, that. That's big. Hell yeah, it's definitely big. And I, that's why I say like, is is you put that that testament to the whole situation and, and different aspects of life and um, just like anybody be going through anything in any moment, and they just look at like your story or any other story is like if they can get through this, I can get through that, and I think that make a, a, a huge difference. Um. What's your, what's your uh, if you could tell anybody going through these situations, old or young, what would you do? Like, how would you, what, what would you think your advice would be? Like, besides not giving up, like, if you could share, in a nutshell, if you could share your story a million times for real, you could tell people, like, what's what it is, but what would you say, what you think you could say that really pushing me, like, yeah, like, I, I like, you should, you should take this advice when you're going through this. Um... I go into everything like just just have a positive mind. So no need no need pay nothing no like just have a positive mind and everything you go through. Uh stay focused on the goal. The goal is the main thing. Right. Would would you ever think about doing something where you could like push the narrative about this? Like as far as encouragement? Because, like I said, a lot of people that go through this don't really have the outlet to really push. Like, because as far as we know, that you know, the, like I said, well-known group of people you're around, well-known family and all that. So everybody, all of, everybody connected to you got the outlet. So no, like, yeah, this is, we can, we can do this and do that. And then you got the, uh, you can talk about that article too. The article you had, you know, oh, yeah. sharing the story. But, um, yeah, the article got published in like 2018 summer. Mm-hmm. And I got a lot of people, like, a lot of people that hit me up about that, like... Throughout bro, the city or just everywhere? It's, well, throughout the city, Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, this inspired me to go harder. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. I just want everybody, like, because at the end of the day, it's a, everybody got situation. Kids out here mm-hmm. got situation, no father, like, somebody they needs to look up to just going through something. Yeah. So I just feel as though, like... I want to inspire them to go hard and not give up, right. not not go hit the streets. The streets not the right thing to do. And mm-hmm. You ain't got people telling them, go. You feel I me? Mean? Like don't do that. But I just want them like hooping, hooping, football, soccer, whatever your niff is, just go do it. Yeah, yeah. and do it Live to life. the best. Yeah, Live life to the fullest. Is that that's one of the, is that out of the whole process, this whole trial and tribulation with this, what's one thing? Like, if you could put it in words, what's one thing? Like, like I, I was just thinking, live life to the fullest. Like, what's one thing that you would say, like, now is, like, my, like, your key thing? Like, it's like, what's what's a phrase or a word that you would say is, like, I got from this? It's like, I know you said a lot. Just keep staying positive and keep, keep, uh... Live, laugh, live, and love. Love. Live, laugh, and love, yeah. That was, like, the, my mama made that up. Like, I was so little. Live, laugh, and love. And that's that's what I you stuck. Yeah. You feel I me? Mean? Yeah. That's that's what even you if you even if you know, you dislike somebody, you still gotta love them. Yeah. So, that's laugh. Real. Laugh. You feel me? You gotta have fun. You gotta laugh. And just live life. That's for real. So um as far as the whole situation like everything is, is clear, everything go, everything back to normal now. Yeah. With that whole situation. Yeah, everything. Even um even when I had surgery, my 2019 time, I had surgery on my hip from the overgrowth of the bone. I'm back. I'm clear from that also. Okay. So what's 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 up for the future? Um, what's the plans? Dow State. I'm finna take over Dow State now. <laughs> <laughs> what's the goal? And you you in your freshman year? Yeah. So what's what's your overall goal for for Dow State? Um. Everything, sports, school, all that. What's what's I your goal? I ain't like I ain't like my. I'm trying to take over, like, I'm trying to get us to at least to March Madness. This is going to be a team thing, but yeah. we're not doing too good this year. So at least get us first, get us a better record, right. make us above 500. Right. You see the potential? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Nice squad. We got, we, got, we got a lot of potential. Okay. A lot of potential. 
But I remember, remember uh, we got on you about that ball in the article when you said, uh, was it making it to the overseas right, or something? Overseas. Yeah, when you okay. was like, nah, you go to the league. You, you know, the big picture, you go <laughs> right. to the league all the way. Yeah, so like, that's the goal is, by my saying, yeah, get up out of there, though, and go higher, a higher D1, honestly. Okay. So I can't make it to the league. What's, what school would you want to go to? I don't know, it don't even matter to me. But have a car. <laughs> have a car, that's where I'm going. Just somewhere big. Just for that senior year. So but also you don't even need that also though. Like John Morant, like he was at Mercy. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. That made it be. big. It's a lot of people out here, like um Overseas shit. Clay Thompson. Mm hmm uh, Small uh, school. Dame Lillard. K State. Uh, all that, uh, even uh, Mark yeah, Fultz, yeah. Yeah. No, he, Mark no, he went to Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, even your boy, uh, Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi San Diego yeah, State. Yeah, yeah. yeah, small school. It's all about what you do when you get there. PJ, right. CJ, Mc, PJ, PJ, um, Paul George, CJ McCullough. Yeah, small school. It's just all about how you produce. But honestly. that's 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 what your your overall career is is your goal is to, to basketball. That's that's the that's yeah. what you want. That's basketball. What you want. So what what would you do? You plan on doing any more with as far as advocation, like pushing the, the narrative about the situation and spread the word and all that, or you just is if it come type if of it, thing. If it come, because I think like college basketball is gonna be so much of a tire. Like I'm gonna barely be home. Yeah. Come 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 by uh, next summer. Like, I'm barely gonna be home. So it's like whatever whatever I'm gonna be able to do. So I'm gonna try to do it, but but like. I'm not gonna be able to be home that much. Right. Right. So uh um overall you the what I got from it is that in conclusion is uh, what I got from it is that um with this process, the biggest thing is is your mind frame, staying positive, fighting through, never giving up. Uh and support is is crucial. Yeah, my support team is big. Like, I ain't gonna lie, like a lot of people came out of came out of nowhere, like, I didn't think was going to support me, like, but people that I didn't even know reached out, like, yeah. big time people reached out, like, I was surprised. It's a, it's a story worth sharing and, and, and uh, pushing, because, like I said, it's, 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 the shit, it's so common, but the, the fact that this shit is some, like, it's cancer come from nowhere, out of the middle of nowhere. And people just get this shit, and people drop left and right. So it's just is is definitely something you don't want to overlook. But like um like one day like I DM Will Butt, and I didn't think he gonna even reply back to me. Uh -huh. Like keep inspiring you, keep inspiring us. Like I think like right after he signed that fifty mil contract, uh -huh. I'm like keep inspiring. He hit, he hit me back like keep inspiring me too yeah. for real. Uh, you got hip. Yeah, I'm like, dang, he's hip. Like, I ain't even know Will was hip. He's like, yeah, I keep, I, I. You just never know. Yeah. You just never, but that's why it's good that you carried it where you carried it because cause you got eyes on you that you don't even know. Like, right. even kids, adults, all that. Like, imagine you got an NBA star saying that, but imagine with kids, you know, like, you know, your, your niece friends, yeah. people like that. You just never know. There's like, a lot of people, kids like, that, people that's just, a lot of kids that even, like, DM yeah, I me, mean, like, I'd be surprised. Like, mm -hmm. I ain't like, I'm really inspiring the youth to do better. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. even, even um, like uh, just like the EMI thing when me and Turn started, that that whole thing started off of his idea. But but it was, it was because he said that people seen him like you know him living just with the chair, living out and going on trips and shit. People would DM him saying that. Yo, how you get to this point? Like, as far as your self esteem and shit like that, and, and like people from, he was telling me it's people from out of the state and all that, like just reaching out and um, just you just never know. And he didn't even have a story like this. Like, it wasn't pushed to a narrative like support and everybody pushing shit. I was just people probably stumbled across his page and seeing like yo living and he in this situation. So it's like you had a whole gang of support, a whole hashtag. Hoodies, companies, all this shit behind you. So it's just like you just never know who's looking at you, and and that's why another thing that I applauded because you stood, you was mature in it, you handled it like an adult, and you didn't put, you didn't let them see you sweat throughout the whole process at all. So I mean, it's a testament. It's, it's your, that's your testimony for real. So it's just like like you said, you never know who's looking at you, and you never know. So with that, with the look, like the key thing that you said, I was I was for little. 
love is a big thing. Like you ain't put no, you didn't put negative energy out there. You ain't put like, I hate this shit. You got people that get on on Instagram stories talking about bills and shit. <laughs> I'm mad. This is this, this, this Fuck this. All this other shit. But you, grind. yeah. Man, but but that, <laughs> out here. and then and at the end of the day, you got a whole situation life or death, and you, you I ain't never see you even post nothing like that. It was all motivational and all that. What you what you should have been. So you know, people say you you get what you put out, and you put positive energy out in that situation, so, and it it came back. So positive. A hundred percent. So, if anybody want to know more or hear more about the story, or just you know reach out for uh, support, anything, how I tell them how they can get in contact. What you find? Um, Mar Strong M A U R Strong S T R Mar Strong M A U R S T R the number zero N G on Instagram and Mar Smith underscore.